Hi, your co-host Kelly here. Our wonderful Nichibei Cafe producers Greg Valoria and Kenji Taguma got to sit down with some members of the Buddhist Church of San Francisco Sangha to learn more about their upcoming Obon Festival, plus their thoughts on the future of Obon and its significance. For two years, we were basically shut down. And it kind of means you get out of practice with a lot of just the normal everyday, how do you put something together? Now we have the element of uh, how do you communicate with folks? Because most people still aren't coming back to church. So you don't have that personal interaction where it's easy to get business done. This festival, uh, we are purposely keeping it small. It's not anywhere near the scale of what we've had in the past with uh, the service one weekend and then the following weekend would be the Ginza Bazaar, which was a huge two-day event. We knew we had to go small this year. So that's the reason that we decided, okay, let's focus on the, the best of Obong, which is really the Odori. You know, that's what people get really excited about. And that's outdoors. So we could do it on Octavia Street and have our Sangha maybe hopefully feel a little more comfortable about coming out for the first time in two years to celebrate this annual event. I have been helping teach Bonodori at BCSF for at least 10 or so years. I think the biggest thing that I've missed is seeing people catching up and just experiencing Bonodori together as a community. Uh, we've had virtual Bonodori, but it's not the same. And you know, that feeling that you get when you see everyone again, or even people that you weren't expecting to see, connecting, knowing that they're doing well, those are the things that I really enjoy about. I've been involved since I was very, very young, but I've been a teacher for over 10 years. I've been, I guess, technically involved since I was born, um, and I have been teaching for about 10 years. Obon is a big community event, and so I think there's a lot of people that come out specifically for the event because they've been coming since they were a kid or it's something nice to do as a family. And so the last two years, there's a lot of people that you see only at Obon and uh, you get to catch up with and have fun with that you don't get to see during other times of the year. So particularly with the pandemic, I think the human interaction, the human connection has been missing a lot. We're really lucky that we have a number of families who maybe they don't even live in San Francisco anymore, but they support it by participating um, because of their, their families have been doing it for many generations. What should people look forward to? Well, odori, you know, it's the music, it's the the dancing, you know, and if you're wearing the kimono or yukata, the costumes and just the colors. And I think what it is, is just seeing other people, old friends, maybe some new folks that you don't know, but it's the feeling that you're part of a group that appreciates a, a very old tradition, whether it is or isn't your personal heritage, just realizing that it's something that's really been passed through down through the ages. Um, and that's a way of honoring history and your ancestors. The teachers as a group decide every year what dances that we are going to be doing, but this year we really wanted to make it as accessible as possible. All of the dances that we chose would be easy enough to pick up, so it's mostly hand dances. If you can't find your own equipment or you can't get any this year, you don't really need it. There's no pressure at all if you're not a good dancer. It's just a fun experience to come and learn about the temple and experience you know, being together with our temple members and just being to, able to experience it in person again. So the first weekend is July 17th, and that is the weekend that we start off the anchor, the first weekend, with the Obong and Hatsubong service, which is the annual memorial service for folks that have gone before us. And Hatsubong specifically for folks that have passed within this past year. In addition to that, we need food. So we're having our annual Aloha Chicken Barbecue Bento Fundraiser for pickup and for delivery to the folks that live in San Francisco who, you know, have a harder time getting out of their houses. And the third element, which is something that we started during pandemic, is the Family Treasures Silent Auction, which is an online fundraiser event. And I think this year they're going to be concentrating on uh, Japanese, Buddhist, and other sort of um, artifacts, collectibles, things like that. And that's all, all going to be online. The second weekend is the focus on Obong Odori. We are going to start off with what we're calling small bites, which is like an easy-to-eat street food. 1 o'clock to 3.30 will be the odori. 
We'll be honoring three groups of people who have been leaders within our temple. The first is Mrs. Yoshiko Fujimoto, who has been the lead teacher for many, many years. The ultimate, ultimate authority is Fujimoto Sensei. <laughs> If Fujimoto Sensei says, no, it's this way, then it's that way. Second, Reverend Hiroshi Abiko, who is probably the most enthusiastic drummer, dancer, uh, and he also makes taiko. And of course, the third would be any past and present uh, Obon teachers. Those are the folks that, you know, during our practices prior to Obong, they go round and round in the gym, uh, going over the motion so that people feel more comfortable with what the dances are. As long as some of us are willing to put in that work and just provide the opportunity to new people to just see what it's about and see what we're doing, it with providing that opportunity, it, it really um, invites people to come and join. We need to just stay alert and think of new ways of doing things. And I think that's really the key. It's adjust to what the conditions and the interests are of the people that are around you. Keeping our traditions alive, but also passing down and being willing to change and adapt to what's going on in the world, but still maintaining that authenticity and mindfulness of why we participate to begin with. So we are very conscious of the fact that 91 years ago, Reverend Iwanaga started Bon Odori here in the United States at this temple, which is just an amazing thing. Being conscious of that, plus I think the fact that Bon Odori is <laughs> one of the best things about the Bon season, so it's a lot of fun. And let's make that the, the, the theme for 2022, when for the first time we're coming back live and in person. We hope to see you on July 17th, July 24th, and July 31st at the Buddhist Church of San Francisco. To learn more about San Francisco's Bono Dori, please visit www.buddhistchurchofsanfrancisco.org.